Our first project of the day is the debut capital branding created by Sophia Yeshi of Yeshi Designs. Debut Capital, founded in 2020, invests in Black, Latinx, and Indigenous founders, creating influential businesses. Please welcome to the virtual stage, Sophia Yeshi, founder of Yeshi Designs, Pilar Johnson, co-founder of Debut Capital, and Bobak Imomayan, co-founder of Debut Capital. Hi, everybody. My name is Sophia Yeshi, the owner of Yeshi Designs. I'm really excited to be here with you today with co-founders Pilar and Bobak. Um, talking about the debut capital branding. So just to give you an introduction into Ga debut capital, uh, they're a venture capital fund investing in Black, Latinx, and Indigenous founders. And they came to me last year with their vision to highlight influential businesses that will shape our future into the revolutionary world it's supposed to be. Um, and if you guys have anything to add, Pilar and Bobak, jump in. And if, you know, if there's anything else you want to share about debut capital, please feel free. So starting off, um, when they came to me, they already had a lot kind of defined, like their values, which was really integral into talk, you know, getting into their process and strategy. Um, so some of their values are good vibes and building a community of people, helping people, honesty and doing the right thing no matter what, value, um, providing value, not just with capital, but to founders and being a partnership. So getting into the brand strategy and we have, I have um, multiple phases when I work on a project. And so um, I would love to hear Pilar and Bobak how this process kind of went for you guys, um, you know, before the project actually began. So just to give you a quick overview, I always start with the client questionnaire and that's when you all just kind of gave some brief answers about like your audience, your competition, what you liked and disliked. You all made a Pinterest board and we had a pretty lengthy strategy session that was about one and a half to two hours where we really dive deep into the project so we could figure out, all right, what is our strategy? And then after that, I created a mood board. So I'd love to hear how that process went for you. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that it was amazing. It was such a smooth process. I think the strategy session was really helpful for us because we went into great depth on like each question and it kind of helped us even beyond like the, the branding of debut. It was, it was answering some questions that we needed to, to ask ourselves just for like debuts process beyond brand strategies. So um, I was really excited about that. And, you know, I still look back to that questionnaire to this day sometimes with just, just to read the answers that, you know, we came up with that day. And the Pinterest board was my favorite uh, part, I think. And, and uh, really seeing Bobak and I first, you know, came up with separate Pinterest boards and then right away we we're like, okay, we'll go this direction. <laughs> and, um, and we were in agreement with it. And so overall, I think like each phase is needed, important, and it was very smooth and fun. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I think it was really, I thought it was really amazing because you guys came to me with such a vision already. And sometimes clients will come and say like, I have no idea what I want. We don't know who we are. And we're kind of starting from scratch, even just building out, you know, who they are as a company or a brand. But you all sort of knew, like you came to me with your values. No, you didn't really have any design necessarily like you know, you, I think you guys made a logo that you had as a placeholder on your website. And we, we went from there. And so it was really early on looking at the Pinterest board and I'll share some of the inspiration for the project soon, but looking at the Pinterest board, you know, I saw like Angela Davis and there was a lot of, you know, vintage posters. And I started to see some color palettes and themes come up. And so I was like, okay, great. I have a really great starting point. And so from there, um, after, you know, all of this research and Pinterest and, you know, all of the time we spent on strategy, that's when I was able to create the mood board. Um, some of the key words that came out of the strategy session, just to share, so you can kind of see like, you know, where the inspiration came for the project. They kept saying revolutionary over and over again, that they wanted the project to be revolutionary, that their audience is revolutionary, the founders are investing in a revolutionary, um, inspiring came up, inclusive, welcoming, warm, powerful, leader, thoughtful, passionate, intentional, not stuffy, cool, playful, dope, and founder first. And so it became very apparent that this 
um, this project wasn't just going to be like any other venture capital firm, which is what brought me, made me excited about it to begin with, that it was something where we could actually play, we could explore, we don't want to look like your average, you know, venture capital firm, which I knew nothing about at the time, you know, as a graphic designer, that wasn't my space. But it was really exciting to be able to learn from you all and see, you know, how your values really came into play with the project. So we can talk about some of your likes and dislikes. Um, what did you all really want to see, if you want to briefly talk about that? Yeah, can I just say, I remember when I got this mood board from you, I was like, ah, like, <laughs> this is it. Like, Sophia totally understood where, where my mind was at. I think that I was really excited to figure out our branding because like you mentioned, you know, before, it was really important for us to switch it up, to be different from, you know, usually when you think of venture capital, you just think of like stuffy, like, you know, white men in suits. And so, <laughs> you know, that's just not us. And, um, and, and, that's, and, and that doesn't really reflect the founders that we want to work with as well. And so I definitely, uh, when thinking about what I wanted our brand and our website to look like, I wanted it to be like for us, for the community that um, you know, that we're focusing on. And I wanted it to felt, feel warm and welcoming and just like a safe space to be dope people of color. And I really think that um, you understood that and, and clearly looking at the mood board, like this was the vibe that um, I was going for. And I was really about orange for some reason. Um, and it was a very specific orange that I was excited about. And I'm sure we'll get into that. Um, yeah. But, but um, yeah, I just, I really loved the color palette here that you came up with. And it was exactly what Bobak and I uh, were imagining. Yeah, so just to get into some of the references, um, so some of the things that they immediately called out, like I said, from those initial Pinterest boards were vintage black magazines and posters. So you kind of see Jet, there was maybe like some ebony or things like that. Um, they talked about wanting really bold color palettes and for typography, a balance of serial, serious and playful. So maybe a balance of serifs and sans serifs. Um, they wanted the project overall to evoke this feeling of being revolutionary. And it was important that it appealed to black, indigenous and Latinx founders. So we really thought about, okay, who's gonna be viewing this and making sure that they feel included and welcomed and a part of the process um, you know, every step of the way. And then some of the things we wanted to stay away from were pastel pink and blue boring blues, um, <laughs> Comic Sans, obviously, and then just looking like any other venture capital firms and stuffy corporate designs. So we wanted this to almost not feel like a venture capital firm when you first look at it. Yeah. And I think that Bobak was very adamant about like no Comic Sans. And I was the <laughs> one that was like, I don't want pastel pink and I don't want any boring blues. So. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. So then you'll go on to the first proof. So from the mood board, you know, you guys pretty much loved everything. We really didn't have any, you know, negative feedback. And so I was really excited to get started with the first proof. And I took a few, you know, weeks to design that. And so my process is actually, um, it's like a one, one um, step approach. And so essentially um, after all of the initial, um, you know, all the initial brand strategy. And once the mood board is approved, I'll take a few weeks and then I'll design not the entire identity, but, um, you know, I design most of it. And so that way the client is able to see everything in context. So they're able to see their logo suite, their colors, their typography, their icons and their patterns. And, you know, they still have plenty of chances for revisions, but I'm not presenting a ton of different concepts because I feel like at that point, we've already done so much research. We've already approved the mood board and we know what direction we're heading in. And so that first concept, most of the time, you know, pretty much nails it and we're just tweaking things here and there. So getting into the first proof. So this bright orange, which looks so much brighter <laughs> on my screen right now, was the first color that um, I kind of went with. And I was like, okay, we want orange, we want bold. And then the logos were, I wanted to have some kind of like logo lockup with the DC. Um, and so I also like this idea of it almost being like a, what's the word, like a, like a stamp or like a badge, you know, something that really made a statement. 
And we knew that we wanted debut to stand, be able to stand on its own because eventually you might want to just use that. And we also knew that debut was going to be more important as far as higher fee than capital. We want that to be the biggest thing. So that's kind of where, you know, we ended up and I would love to hear your feedback and what was working and wasn't working from this first logo suite. Yeah, so I think as soon as I saw this, I was like, this is not the orange that I was <laughs> looking for. But I was very excited about majority of like everything else. But I think that um, the orange to me was like a little too bright and a little too like Halloween. And that was my feedback uh, uh, to you. And I think Bobak might have had some thoughts more on like the the logos. I, I, I like... Um, logos yeah i think the only other conversation that came up was um dc comics oh yeah and mm -hmm. just kind of uh googling that a little bit and, and wondering if that would kind of be uh pretty close to that so so we mm -hmm. kind of uh talked through that as well yeah that's and after this we decided to stay away from dc at all as the you know the brand mark we said okay let's just stick with the big emblematic d um, so that way, you know, we don't have this issue with DC, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing was, you all were wondering why I had the logos tilted and rotated. Oh, yeah. like, I don't really <laughs> understand why the logos rotated. And so I basically said that in my thinking, you know, debut capital is forward thinking and revolutionary. And so by having it on a tilt, it's like we're moving forward and upwards. And I thought that it was a great brand device to be able to apply to the rest of the branding as well, to be able to have this motion and then to be able to use that in other instances and you'll kind of see how that repeats a little bit so then we get into type exploration which you guys never saw any of this um this was just me <laughs> playing around with different typefaces and just really trying to figure out what I liked and didn't like so I knew I wanted to pair serifs and sans serifs um and I was going through all these different serifs and you know kind of pairing things together I even had this really chunky debut capital logo here that I was playing with it was kind of similar to the ones you guys had previously mm -hmm. um and I ended up kind of going in this direction so I went with granite, which is from Colophone Foundry. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, but um, it was, I think it was new at the time. And I felt like it was the perfect sense of like playfulness, but also serious. And it just, it felt fun, but it felt a little vintage as well. And I was like, okay, this gives like all the vibes that we're going for, for the brand. So I ended up kind of moving forward with that. And then the iconography. Um, and so the icons were based on the values and being able to, I actually think these weren't based on the values. These were just me pulling out different things <laughs> to make icons. Um, and so I kind of went with this like more literal style at first. And then you guys didn't feel like that hit the mark. Can you talk about why maybe we didn't want to go with this icon style? Yeah, Bovac, you want to answer that? Sure. Um, yeah, I think I think that where we ended up landing and through a lot of conversation was um, the the kind of um, uh, iconography around uh, it being so literal. Um, we kind of got stuck there, and then hmm. as we started to think about uh, and and you you the way you were kind of uh, poking and prying for feedback led us to this place where um, we kind of could could pick do we want to go literal or kind of more abstract and we're like oh that's that's really cool like what what would or what could abstract look like and mm -hmm. then that kind of unlocked a whole new world i think for for us that we we got really excited about that ultimately led to the patterns that that we have yes so actually the patterns were already in the first proof oh nice and okay. they were created because from that very first D um, of the logo, I took that and I kind of played with it, expanded it, pulled it out. And then from the mood board, we had some like vintage tiles. And I thought I really liked how those tiles looked. And I wanted to create something that felt really repetitive, but it still had that upward motion. Um, but it was all created just overlapping the D. Like that's literally all the icons, everything was just from overlapping the D. And I thought this is a really great way to kind of incorporate that into the entire you know, brand identity. Mm -hmm. And I know that these were the initial patterns and you guys didn't love we said it looked Halloween. So we, yeah, <laughs> we kept I, the patterns, which. <laughs> yeah, I loved the patterns. I think the patterns were like my favorite part of what was presented. It was just the colors. The colors. This pattern. And I was like, yeah. this looks like Halloween, but let's just replace some of the colors. Yes. Also, I remember giving you the feedback of like, 
I didn't want to mix the orange with the with the black like black the mm-hmm. charcoal color mm-hmm. yeah yeah so yeah we like from the first proof pretty much you know we just had these fine these minor tweaks to make mm-hmm. and so you know it took me another couple weeks and I was able to come back with you know a new logo set and we'll see kind of where we went from there so this is to give you guys a sneak at the brand guidelines and I ended up pairing, um, I think it was Acumen with um, Granette because I really like the idea of pairing like this, these bold, you know, serif, chunky typeface with something that was a little bit more like serious because it's still a venture capital firm. Like we don't want it to be too mm-hmm. out there, but you know, I still wanted mm-hmm. it to have this sense of like fun and playfulness. Mm-hmm. Um, and as far as the logo, so we we kept the same, um, kept the same um, typeface and we ended up creating this, um, this D right here. And so this D was created by taking, um, I literally took the D and I like, I think I, I, what did I do? Like kind of overlapped it. And I made this, this shape in the middle and you all weren't really sold on it at first when I first presented this logo suite. And I essentially explained, so we have that forward motion again, but what this D really meant for me is, I should have included just one, just with the D so you could see it. But essentially right in the middle, let me see if I can find, okay. Um, it's pointing forward. And so I felt like this was another great way to kind of hint at you know that forward motion and moving upwards. And I thought that shape would is really great to be repeated and kind of used as a brand device. And so you can see the logo suite that we created, um, the different logo variations. So they had flexibility across, um, you know, Instagram and other places. And so once you saw this logo set, like, how were you feeling? Uh, yeah, I was excited about it. Like you said, I think we at first Bobak and I needed a little mainly me needed a little co- more convincing around what you <laughs> did with the D. Um, but then once you explain like why you did that, and just the meaning behind it, I was like, okay, I totally see it now. I understand. Love it. Let's keep it. I think your first reaction was it looked like Pac-Man or, 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 or yeah, a flower or something. I, <laughs> I probably said both. I think I said both. (laughs) Well, I was glad that, you know, once, (laughs) yeah, I was, I was glad that like, once I explained the concept that you guys understood like the rationale, you were like, oh, that makes sense. And it kind of like clicked. Mm -hmm. So just to see a little bit more applications, you can see the way that the typeface interacts for large headlines, the um, paragraph font, the um, heading two, and then heading three. And so I feel like it was kind of a nice mix. Like I said, like, I like the fact that the logo was set in this like wide, chunky font and it contrasted everything else. I really felt like a a good amount of contrast was really important when it came to the typography, Um, just to kind of bring in like, these different feelings you know that we had initially and then you can see how I was able to use just this initial shape um, as a brand device to be able to frame photos and to use for shapes and things like that um, that was able to be repeated and so just to show you a little bit more of the um, brand guidelines you can see the icons here and so um, once again just repeating those d shapes I really had fun just coming up with different um, layouts and variations. So I, I took that, um, this little shape right here and I just used that to repeat over again. So to show the, um, I, yeah. <laughs> show the values of good vibes, honesty, value, and partnership. So you see, this is kind of repeated, like, um, you know, we're partners working together. Um, and just everything really came together at this point. And I feel like the icons kind of tied it all in. Do you guys feel that mm-hmm. way? Yeah, no, when we saw these icons, we were obsessed. We really liked them. And I, I think even looking at this together, I'm like, we we went the right way with being a little more like abstract with the iconography. Yeah, absolutely. And so, yeah, with the patterns, you can see um, we kept the original patterns. And so what this pattern actually is, it's the D up and down repeated. But when you look at it, I don't necessarily see a D. I see, yeah, I don't you know. Either. Right. And so it's it's like subtle ways that we can kind of incorporate the same, you know, brand device over again. Yeah. And love the, the color palette. Oh, yes. I love the color palette. Love it all. So happy. <laughs> <laughs> I think the 
colors were my fave and they actually kind of came easy. Like the very first proof we had all of these colors except for the orange wasn't right. And like mm -hmm. we explored a different palette at some point and it just didn't, mm -hmm. it didn't hit the same way. So we came back to this one. Um, what's it, how did you feel when you saw the color palette? Like how do the colors make you feel just looking at them? I love these colors. Like I love these colors with debut and I find myself wearing these colors a lot, <laughs> like outside of debut. So, I mean, once we figured out this orange, I was like, this is it. I was so happy that the debut orange was going to be our like primary color. Cause I just yeah. felt like a lot of companies in general, especially like VC, uh, you know branding isn't orange and so I felt like that really helped us stand out and kind of mm -hmm. differentiate us and I just think that this orange with the beige like really pairs well with all the other like secondary colors that we came up with um mm -hmm. at first I was like the yellow was very yellow or you know <laughs> but I I like it you know paired with you know, some of the other colors. So I'm a big fan of every color that we went with. And I was also very happy that the black is like a charcoal black and it's, yeah. you'll see it here and there, but I was very like excited that that wasn't going to be seen too much on, on our website and, and just through our branding that there was just so many other colors to choose from and different ways to pair it. Yeah. So why did this color palette represent debut capital to you? I just think it felt very fresh, um, unique, and it felt warm. It gave me a little bit of like a vintage vibe without being too like kitsch or retro. Mm -hmm. And it felt, it felt, it felt cool but still like serious professional yeah. but just like dope <laughs> dope that's the the word of the <laughs> entire project dope. <laughs> <It's> dope. <laughs> yes and then so for the business cards um I'm a fan of having different colored business cards because I feel like it's really fun so I was able to use different color combinations of you know the color palette and use the logo on the front and just kind of reverse it on the back. And so I had a lot of fun, you know, playing around with these. And I hope I, I hope they get printed. I mean, who uses business cards right now? But, you know, <laughs> I hope one day I'll see them. <laughs> I hope so, too. I want, yeah, we need to, we need to print them out. I'm, they all look good. I want them in all the colors. <laughs> yes, every color. Like, which color do you guys want? When you give Which one out. you want today? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and so we also created a few additional um, assets and collaterals. So we created a newsletter template um, that I created in Illustrator, and you know, you all, you figured out how to how to use it, you know. Um, and so yeah, I created this, and so you can kind of see some different applications of the shapes and the way that you know you're able to use those to frame photos. Um, and I just tried to make it kind of simple. But once again, fun and kind of bringing in this color and this energy that the rest of the brand identity had. But something that wasn't too hard to use, right? Because if it's overcomplicated, you know, as the client, you all are going to need to go to a designer every single time mm -hmm. to be able to send out a newsletter. And so that was important as well. At one point, I was like, do you want to use Canva? Like, how are we going to do it? But I was <laughs> glad that I think, Bobak, you had some illustrator skills. <laughs> Very little. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I can open like Illustrator. <laughs> That's pretty much it. <laughs> good. Good. Okay. And then the visual language. And so um, just being able to use these shapes, you know, this D and then the shape inside of the D to not only frame photos, but to use as shapes as well. And so I didn't design your website, but I thought it was so clever how the web designers were able to use the shapes from the icons as well as, you know, these shapes to create fun, you know, different like uh, elements for the website. And so if you haven't seen, you know, go check out debutcapital.com. I didn't include it because I didn't design it, but um, it's a really great way to see how the brand identity is able to be extended and it can keep building off of, you know, this visual language. Yeah, we were really excited about the website as well. And I think that 
it was important for me to just work with dope women of color in every aspect of branding. And so, you know, we worked with you for the branding guidelines. And then we worked with um, with Studio for the website. And, and Grayson is the founder of Studio. And she's another dope uh, woman of color. So um, this is woman led <laughs> and, and you can tell. And then how did, I'm curious, how did that kind of come up? Like, was it them coming up with the idea of using like the shapes or was that something that just kind of happened organically? I think I, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Bob. I think it, it, it really is a reflection of how well the uh, brand guidelines mm -hmm. were put together that like they knew where they could um, get creative and they knew like, where it was striving, like straying too far from from the brand, and it was really cool because even in that process, it was like we knew when we were looking at mockups whether it was within the brand guidelines or not, mm -hmm. and so those little um, extensions and ideas that ended up coming up, like like the um, you know uh, uh, icons and and kind of some of the abstract uh, aspects um, were were subtle. Uh, but like really in line with a lot of the um, core values, iconography that you had designed. So it was, it was really um, cool to see. And there was a lot of stuff that was in there that we they just didn't fit the, the brand guidelines. And, it, and they, I mean, they, it was very specific for them too. So it was really cool to see that process and, and almost stress test the, the brand guidelines in a, a different way and, and see um, how flexible, uh, but consistent it was still able to be. Did we just lose her? I think we think might so. have. So let me come on and keep you guys company while, okay. while uh, <laughs> we're waiting. But uh, you know what happens, right? We're live. This hey. is this is what happens with technology. <laughs> and and so let you know um, to to maybe ask a question. You know, for you, Pilar and Bobek, I think what you you just you know um, until Sophia gets back, but you know, in hearing this conversation, right? Debut capital equals dope people of color, right? Like this is kind of like this overarching conversation. If you just, you know, realized, you just said it, that the project was designed by a woman of color. Then you went to a web person who was, you know, how did you go about finding these people? Yeah, Bobak, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Cause I know it was you doing a lot of the research. Sure, yeah, we, um... In our past life, we were we were in the agency world, and so we um, had some different um, folks that we connected with there. And then um, uh, I think Grayson we had uh, met through um, some some different uh, design communities, and I think Sophia we found on Blacks Who Dot Design, um, which is a really awesome directory um, of designers, art directors, product folks. Um, and we had we'd kind of uh, reached out to to her through that, mm -hmm. so we, we did a bunch of research and kind of um, reached out to uh, a bunch of folks, and then mm -hmm. ultimately decided on uh, working with Sophia. Oops. Yep, nice. So, so just actively finding out people who kind of represent what your kind of brand values are and things like that. That's mm -hmm. that's awesome. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so I guess even considering, you know, Sophia mentioned that you came to her with some type of Pinterest board or, or mood board, mm -hmm. right? How important do you think that was for you in kind of, I guess, solidifying your ideas to a creative? Yeah, I think that it was really important for us to be thoughtful with branding and to have an idea already and, and be able to take that to the right designer and then kind of expand on that and have, and Sophia was great. Like she said, she has a questionnaire and in pulling more information out of us and making us think like beyond the Pinterest board that we created. And so going to like go from the beginning, you know, we had ideas like, okay, I know I don't want to see pastel pink around debut. I know I don't want this be like these boring navy you know like blues and stuff and and I knew that there was a vibe that I wanted debut to kind of like have and give off and and like I said I wanted I I really love the 70s I love the culture and vibe of that decade and so I wanted to kind of have that 
like represented but not be too like retro or you know goofy and so I really Mm -hmm. think like I took that information to Sophia and 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 this was the result and and so I think that it was like I said it was important to have a thoughtful like idea and it was crucial to to work with the right designer to really have this outcome. And I mean, I think the the colors that she's able to come up with or that you all were able to to, to come up, one of the big things is like, you know, you wanted orange. Is there a reason? Yeah. Like that orange. Um, you know, I mean, I know, I know not the Halloween orange, but you know, an orange <laughs> is something important that you, you seemed. You know, I think that orange is just a color like you don't see enough. And, and <laughs> she's back. <laughs> she's back. My computer was uh, protesting against me. Oh, no worries, Sophia. Um, but continue, Pilar. I, yeah, I was just saying, you know, I, th- I think orange is a color that you don't see too much. And especially like this kind of orange. And um, it just feels like a safe, like warm color. And I associate it a lot with like my community because I feel like uh, a, like a lot of people don't wear orange, but we look great in orange. And, mm. and so I just was kind of like obsessed with the color and I really wanted it to, to be the primary one. And Bobak just kind of let me go with that. So I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that. I love how you know, almost in every intention you're making clear decisions to root back to brand values, to root back to, you know, why the venture capitalist, you know, what you're, who you're trying to support. Right. And, and yeah. even this, the idea, like you even mentioned, right. You're starting to wear more of these colors, right. Even Sophia is kind of, kind of in that jaded color right now. Right. <laughs> yeah. And it looks, it looks amazing. Right. It just kind of, it starts to figure out like, Oh, these are actually working well with the idea and the people mm-hmm. that I'm surrounding myself with. Mm-hmm. Hello, Sophia. Welcome to have you back. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. I don't know what happened. <laughs> um, do you have more to, to, to go or do you want to just, you know, continue with, with some questions? Um, I only have two more slides. So I'll briefly show you guys the social media templates, which is just another extension of, um, you know, everything else that we already saw as far as giving them different layouts and ways, that, you know, when they create their new podcast episode. And we're actually going to be building out these templates even more because, you know, initially we only thought we needed five um, going into it, right? And so I checked in um, not too long ago and they, they realized, actually, I need a little bit more flexibility of layouts. And so, you know, we're going to kind of build those out a little bit more so that they have even more templates and they can keep things free fresh and interesting on social media. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, see, we, even if we had cut off, we, had, we didn't have that much left. <laughs> the <Yeah>. end. <laughs> and I just put some contact info down here if you guys want to keep up with Debut Capital on their Instagram or their website, debutcapital.com, or me at Yeshi Designs, yeshidesigns.com, and then Pilar and Bobek, and then their emails are here. So if you, awesome. you know, want to hit us up, you can. Awesome. Thank you. So now, now, now some questions for Sophia, since, you know, you know, I, I, I kind of hit debut with some, um, but thank you for sharing this visual journey, especially of the colors and um, the, the great way to see the iterations and patterns. I think that's, we, we see that in the evolution of how you're crafting this. Um, you know, we talked about it before, um, you know, the, the, the dope people of color is a, is a, is a theme <laughs> that came up. And, and when I'm looking at, the branding, right? It feels both vintage and modern at the same yeah. time, right? That was the goal. <laughs> yeah, right. And and I think, but you know, what do you think that was the 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 backbone of making some of those creative decisions, right? Because it feels like it could skew almost, you know, one way or the other, and it doesn't. Mm-hmm. It is like that perfect middle. Yeah, I think for me, it was about being inspired by these, you know, these color palettes and some of these ideas that I was seeing in these, you know, magazines um, from like the 60s and 70s, but not letting that take over the project. And so that's why I think it was really important to have a balance, like of having the serif and the sans serif, of having, you know, these fonts that are like more rounded, but then having something that feels like super modern. Because I, I did want it to kind of play off of each other and, and kind of feel like, okay, we're moving forward, but we're always informed by the past. And that was really mm-hmm. what, you know, they were telling me. And I was really listening to them and allowing them to give me their vision, which, you know, 
like I said, a lot, of, a lot of clients don't do that, right? And so I thought it was amazing to have, you know, you guys really know kind of what you wanted, but you gave me enough freedom to, to figure out how to interpret, you know, that vision. So yeah, I mean, I think even the color palettes, like everything just kind of clicked. Like it didn't feel like I was, I was trying too hard to find it. I was like, okay, we're going to go with this, but you know, and I want to do this mix of typefaces. So yeah, it just, it just came together. Very cool. And one last thing, right? As you're putting all this together, you know, in the mood boards and then in the web mockups and these other things, right? You know, on the web, it's not always easy to find images of BIPOC people, right? It's not like this normal thing where you go look at something and it's like, okay, here's a bevy of things, right? How did you go about searching for those images to help create that? Because they may, you may have, unfortunately, had to go out of your way to find different and more unique, you know, outlets to fulfill your goal. Can you give yeah, us any like, a, insight into that? That's a great question. Um, when I was looking for photos, it was especially hard because I wanted them to be within the color palette. Um, and so I always go to, I can give you guys like some of the websites that I go to. So I'll go to Unsplash, which is like free stock photography. But the thing is like the search terms, right? It's even when you do try to search like black people smiling, like, what are you searching to even find these photos? You know what I mean? It's so random. So I'm uh, doing a lot of digging. A lot of times, you know, when they'll have like pre-curated collections, I'll look through there. Um, I'm, I'm searching like portraiture. Um, and then I also go to Pexels for more free photography. In this case, I went to um, um, Stocksy, which is, oh, it's like one of the best collection of stock photos but it's very expensive so you license per photo um and you know it starts at i think 25 dollars, but that's really small so it's per like dimensions so for uh like a large photo it's like 75 dollars um and so i didn't use any photos from stocksy to actually in the actual you know identity as far as uh, i think i used one in like the the mood board but um and then I'll use Adobe Stock as well. So I'll, I'll search through all those different websites and I'm usually downloading tons and tons of photos so that I have a lot to work with, but it is, it is very difficult. And I know that there are, um, you know, stock boundaries, is that the word? There, there are some that are, that are, you know, being created, like there's tonal, um, but I think they just, you know, we need to support them as well as they continue to grow and have more photos and um, more photography, but it, it's definitely a pain point. I think any designer, you know, who works with people of color can tell you that's something that's always hard to find. Agreed. Agreed. That's why sometimes digging and searching, you know, is, is, is part of our journey, right? To kind of find out that we make sure that we include or find the things that speak to our clients that, that create this moment of almost kismet, right? Like, you, you know, it's great to hear from both sides that you, you, you kind of just said the colors just feel right, right? Yeah. That's not easy to achieve. It just, you know, there's a, there's a combination of understanding and relationships that kind of say, we, we, we hit it, <laughs> you know, and, and, and I'm seeing that with that in the way that that debut is able to find creatives of color, the, the way that Sophia is able to kind of interpret what's going on. And I think that's really a testament to just kind of how this working relationship. Um, and so this one last question, right, since, you know, debut is such a young company with so much opportunity ahead of you, right, where does this relationship go? What's what's happening next? We got lots that's to do. Great, yeah, we got lots to do. <laughs> um, that's a good question. I feel like as we continue to grow, I'm sure like there will be, you know, a, a need to expand on branding, and and we always want to like work with Sophia on that. Like she mentioned earlier, just like having more uh, templates for social media. That's like a small, you know, area that I'm sure will expand again and. And Bobak's like obsessed with swag. I'm sure that will, you know, come to play <laughs> for debut as well. So there's definitely a lot of opportunity. And I'm just really excited that we were able to meet Sophia early on at the beginning and, and just like go out the front door with like, this is our branding and not have to do a whole like rebrand because the first version was crap. It just starts off amazing. So it's only like up from here. <laughs> yes. And I told them they got me early because now I'm busy. Okay. 
we, we it was had before a couple you were on TV. <laughs> That's right. So we was on TV now. now. You're a TV star. We had commercials. Yeah. We like, girl, don't forget about us. Like, yeah. you know? <laughs> I, I think what it comes down to is I need to think about how I'm going to grow and expand as well because a lot of times when I do work with clients, unfortunately, I don't have the bandwidth six, you know, eight months from now to keep adding on, you know, new things because I'm stuck in the current project that I'm in. And so I think that is important to think about, like, okay, how can I make sure that I'm like continuing to be uh, available to my clients later on because we even had a project that we had ideated like everything out for you know the the box that we talked about a couple months after and I unfortunately just couldn't I couldn't get to it you know what I mean and so I think that is a really great point to you know want to be able to keep working with clients and be able to retain them and not say okay go to this designer over here (laughs) for whatever else you need yeah absolutely Right, right. So the first thing I wanted to happen here is get those business cards printed, regardless <laughs> if they're used or not. But I want to see the multicolored business cards, right? Yeah. Um. Thank you. Thank you all so much for sh- sharing this fantastic work and being here with us at the AIGA Design and Business Conference. Yeshi, Pilar, and Bobak, we appreciate your time. Thank, thank you, you so much for thank having you. us. Bye. 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 Bye.